Greetings, friends. So this week, I'm going to be talking to you guys about the next Yes album in the series of the studio albums I've been talking about, and that is the ever-popular Close to the Edge. Now, as we all know, Yes will be going out on their 50th anniversary tour this year to celebrate this record, so what better time to discuss this album? So what I'm going to show you, just like the other records, I'm going to show you some of the pressings that I have in my collection, what I think of them, and uh, you know, give you some insight on them in case you are interested in maybe picking up a copy of the record for your collection, and uh, you know, you don't know what to look for, or maybe you don't know what to search out or what one's worth searching out, you know, because that's that's important. Sometimes people don't know how these records sound before they buy them and they you know they drop some money on it and then they realize that they have a pressing that doesn't sound very good and uh it makes them not want to go out and buy or take a chance on buying records so i'm going to do my best to guide you on the right path for close to the edge just like i did with the other ones so the first one i'm going to show you is one that you should definitely not get now i got it mainly because i saw it at a record store I was absolutely surprised to see it there. And it is definitely a pressing you don't want to own of it because number one, it's technically not, it's not official. This is a Taiwan pressing of Close to the Edge. Now, this cover is like the closest thing to paper. First of all, the back of it is like just typeset lyrics of the album. And the vinyl itself has a very interesting center label, I'll give it that. As you can see there. But the sound of this record is is not good. I mean, it's not like, you know, that's not like nails down a chalkboard or anything like that, but it definitely isn't anything that a person who wants a you know a decent listening experience would want to drop money on. Uh the, the rumor behind these sorts of pressings, the Taiwan pressings, is that uh, the military that was stationed overseas sometimes were complaining that they wanted to get pressings of American or British bands, and uh, they just found ways to bring over stampers from either America or from the UK and gave them to certain pressing plants in the region. I don't know if it's in Taiwan or maybe in some of the some of the nearby countries uh but they pressed them and usually these stampers were pretty used up they were not anything like they weren't like in great condition so these uh these versions of it really show that they were pretty weak so avoid the taiwan pressing at all costs now a pressing that you might want to seriously consider getting because this is one that sounds excellent in my opinion and I, I've listened to all of these, some of them numerous times. And this is one of them that I was very happy to get, so I listened to it numerous times. This here is an American pressing of... Yeah, this is an American pressing of Close to the Edge. Okay, now at the bottom, you may not be able to see it too well, but it says, uh, Manufactured by Atlantic Records. Uh, 1841 Broadway, New York, New York. That's usually a dead giveaway that this is a first U.S. pressing. Now, what makes this record excellent is not only is it, you know, uh, you know, done on decent vinyl, it's also been mastered and lacquered by George Piros, who's a fantastic uh, lacquer cutter. A lot of his a lot of his work is sought after not only for Yes stuff, but for like Led Zeppelin, like Led Zeppelin one. If you can find a George Piros kind of Led Zeppelin one, you have a really excellent sounding, you know, version of that record. But this is one that you should definitely seek out. It's the first pressing of it, a first U.S. pressing. The catalog number would be SD seven two four four. And again. That's the the labeled here, side two. I believe I showed you side one a minute ago, so there's side two. Just look for that catalog number and also look for the manufactured at the uh, that address at the bottom, 1841 Broadway. That is the dead giveaway 
of this uh, version of the record. And I've listened to it numerous times and it sounds fantastic. Very full, very good bass, very good top end. The stereo spectrum of it is really nicely done. Uh, highly recommended. Now, a pressing that most people will probably say should be high on the list. And I'm going to say yes and no. And let me explain to you. So this here, and I'll just get my information up. This is easy to find because you'll see why in a minute. This is a 1972 pressing close to the edge. This is a Japanese pressing. I believe it might be a first pressing. I'm not 100% certain of that. But these ones, okay, first of all, let's put it this way. The covers are fantastic. They're like books. They're hard, really good material, excellent covers. The OBs are very nice. And inside it, you have the proper artwork and everything. I'll show you that in a second, but I'll show you another thing that's really neat about it in a minute. Oops. Uh, da, 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 da. There you go. Sorry about that. Uh, there you have the artwork inside with the OB strip inside there. Now, what came with this, which is really cool, is you get the inner sleeve that came with most of the US ones and the Canadian ones and all the proper releases of it. Now most people will probably say, well that could just be any inner sleeve from anything. No, it's not because if you take a look at the top, where is that? I just saw it just a second ago. Uh, oh, okay, yeah. Down here at the very bottom where my finger is down here. See that little thing down here? That is the, the uh, catalog number of the record which is if i can just find oh yeah it's p a 274 a now that's right on here so this is a one that comes with the japanese pressing and also with the japanese pressings comes these japanese inserts as well which are really cool to have so this is one that goes with close to the edge the lyrics there is in here as well in japanese so it's a very neat pressing uh the the album, though, is this is where I kind of say yes and no, because while the album sounds really nice and dead quiet, it's done on really nice vinyl. It looks really nice. Oops, almost dropped it there. It looks really nice. It's in great condition. Japanese collectors are known to keep their records in excellent condition. So if you buy Japanese, never be afraid that you're going to get a scratched up or marked up record. That's hardly ever the case. But because they do their own sort of mastering EQ job on these pressings, they tend to have much less bottom end than the normal UK or American pressing for this record. So be aware of that. The audio quality of this, while good and quiet and stuff like that, it is not the same fidelity that we get in the UK or in America or in Canada. So beware of that pressing. Now, Another interesting pressing to get, and I'm guessing I'm going to say that this is one for people who are diehard collectors. This is a 1974 Czechoslovakian pressing of Close to the Edge. Notice the changing of the name in Slovak language and the Czech or Czechoslovakian language. The back is a bit different than the normal one. You have the names, the songs have it both in Slovak, or both in Czech. And in English, there's the artwork. Now these are a little bit on thinner paper again, but the the center labels on these are really neat because they're on a label called Suprafun, which is a well-known big label in Czechoslovakia at the time. There you go, the Atlantic label on there with the Suprafun. Now, most people kind of turn their nose up on these and say, ah, oh, that's just probably a, you know, it's probably like a, a needle drop version or it's, you know, later on people would say that it's like a, a, a copy of a CD or something. Well, obviously it can't be that because there were not CDs in 1974. And for if this is a needle drop, then that was a damn good needle drop and somebody knows what they're doing because it sounds decent. I'm guessing it's just they got sent over maybe a second generation tape like you know two track tape from Atlantic like a backup copy or something and they made their pressings from that not a bad sounding pressing by any stretch of the imagination much better than the Taiwan and much better than some of the other ones that I've heard in the past 
but not in the standard of the um, not in the standard of let's say the US one or the UK pressings. Now here's one that's an uh, interesting one to take a look at. This, now let me just make sure I can get the information out for you guys before I start yapping about it. There we go, it's right there. This is a reissue. This is the 2012 reissue of Close to the Edge. As you can see, it's a beautiful condition. It's relatively new. All the same accoutrements in it. Uh, it has the original type inner sleeve, but it's not paper. It's much better quality paper in this version of it. And the thing, the thing to make note of with this, though, is that this is uh, done on 180 gram vinyl. As you can see there, nicely done, beautiful labels. And this is cut by Chris Bellman, I believe. I'm going to double check my notes, but actually, from my real audio file, I can check here. Yes, there you go. I believe that's a CB there. There, and I'll just double check here just to make sure that I'm correct. <clears throat> yes, CB. It is cut by Mr. Chris Bellman. And uh, yeah, and this is pressed also at Optimal Media in Germany. Now, this pressing is looked upon by collectors as a very, very good reissue of it. Fantastic sonics, fantastic uh, stereo spread of the instrumentation, the sound stage as they call it, good top end, bottom end. Could be a bit better, but it's, it sounds excellent. The only thing that I noticed with my pressing is my version of side A close to the edge had some pretty big inner groove distortion after about 15 minutes in near the ending of the song started getting a lot of inner groove distortion now, I don't know if that's just my pressing of it or if it's with with all of those but it was it was a little noticeable I didn't it, it didn't sound too hot but side two was whew, fantastic and you and I and Siberian Kachu sounded fantastic absolutely fantastic so uh, I would maybe check the reviews on this one to see if other people complained about that. I don't think I've read many other people complaining about that, of any inner groove distortion stuff, but you never know. Uh, I, I think overall it's gotten some pretty good reviews. Uh, from just when I'm looking here, most of it has given it a 5-star, five 5-star, five 5-star, five one of the best ones they've heard, blah, 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 blah. So I think that uh, it's a it's a good one to get. Uh and according to somebody's rankings here, they have a, a huge ranking. They say that the Bellman one is probably one of the best ones to get uh, tied with Stephen Wilson's remix. Now, I'm not too keen on Stephen Wilson's remix of it, but they think highly of it. Now, the last two that I have here to show you are Canadian ones. This is a Canadian pressing of Close to the Edge. I will show you the vinyl. This is the KSD 19133 serial num uh, catalog number. Now, the Canadian pressings can be interesting. If you look at here, I don't know if you can notice the dead wax there, okay, on this is pretty big. Like, there's a lot of that dark black by the label there, which means that they didn't use up a lot of the vinyl on that side. Now, when I show you the other one, you'll, you'll notice that the side A on the second Canadian pressing I have the, the dead wax area is much thinner, which means that they did maybe wider grooves and better sounding cut of it. I think this one is the, the inferior version of it. Uh, it still sounds good. I'm not going to say it doesn't sound good. But if, if you have a choice between this one that I showed just now, the KSD serial number or catalog number, sorry, and the next one I'm going to show you, I would go with this one. This one here... I believe is the more newer version, well newer, the, the, actually the more original version of it. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, here's the cover. You can see it's a little bit more worn in and worked out. It's obviously been around the block. This one's also a, a uni pack, which means that it opens from the inside there, which is really annoying if you ask me. <coughs> I've never liked those kinds of jackets on a, on a record. 
Uh, and the serial number on this one, or the catalog number, is SD7244. Now, this is side one. And as you'll see, it's much thinner, that dead wax space, than the other one. So this one is definitely has a better sounding cut of the songs, uh, as, as well as side B. But this one, it sounds really good. Not as good as the US pressing, I'll be completely honest. Uh, and the U and the UK one, um, I have the, I have a UK pressing. It's downstairs. I didn't bring it upstairs. Uh, it's in a, a spot where it's kind of hard to get right now. But uh, the UK one is also a very well sought after pressing. In fact, most people will say if you have the means to get a UK pressing, get a UK first. You'll be never dissatisfied. And it's true. I have a UK first of Fragile, of Close to the Edge, uh, and a few other. Uh, records i believe i also have a first pressing of going for the one all sound magnificent uh but also a good one to also keep in mind too is uh never look past the german pressings the german pressings sound really good they really you know uh, really take a lot of attention to detail on their cuts when they do it so i would really keep your eye out for the german pressings as well so there you go there's the uh pressings that i have in my collection uh, i believe next up we're gonna have uh what would be next oh yeah tales from topographic oceans wow that's gonna be an interesting one to take a look at so until then this is mark anthony k saying i hope you're doing well out there and i'll talk to you all very soon bye for now